Antidote appears to have produced a specific response that renders this work a contrast from every other Mortemia track that I've currently approached. In each piece I've loved, I'm sure Antidote will follow suit. I state this outright because what I'm about to say, I'm going to run with it for lack of better phrasing. It's going to sound bad, and I don't mean it to. I have never laughed so hard at a Mortemia collaboration announcement. Not out of dissatisfaction for the choice, and certainly never out of disrespect to any of the artists. But it appears that my general mulling over names resulted in a dead-on pick. This is not often that that's, that's, that's the production, but yet that's where I sit with Antidote. If you're from, I'll start this video actually on a first uh, on a baseline for anyone who's approaching Mortimi on a first name basis, and I would imagine maybe a number of you are. He is uh, Morton Veland is the artist behind the project. I'm part of both the COVID aftermath sessions currently unveiling and the previous pandemic pandemonium sessions. He heralds from Cyrenia, long-standing member of theirs, and I think one of their foundational members from my memory who I've been engaged with for several months as well. And I would recommend them. He is a Norwegian Gothic symphonic metal artist. Mortimi, like I said, is a solo project. I'm part of the musical scores and construction blended with an intersecting collaborative presence, usually of the European variety and a part of the vocals. Maybe there's some exceptions as well with other uh, artists coming in. For example, there was one er er track earlier on this album that featured a, um, uh, another member of Cyrenia, a Nils Cabron, but usually it'll be for the talents of a with some exception, European uh, female vocalist on part of a noteworthy band or maybe an emerging presence as well. And the pattern with Mortemia is because the COVID after F sessions is unveiling, tracks come out on occasion. And so what will happen is you go on to Mortemia's socials. For me, it's usually on Instagram, and there will be an announcement of, oh, Mortemia news incoming of the next collaborative artist. And you're sitting back immediately, if you're a Mortemia fan like me, and maybe you could relate on this, you start mulling over who could it be, right? You start running through your list of known names of the European rock and metal variety, which many of you know I love, and you start making guesses. Fabien was the first name that popped up, which is really interesting because I didn't have the deepest understanding of her talents at the time. I had, uh, I was trying to mull over in preparation what produced that answer. And I've limited it down to two reasons. Number one, specifically, she is of recent appearance here on behalf of some of her collaborative work, whether produced and published or subsequently arriving at some later date. Currently of what's available, and the first point of entrance for me and part of her uh, gifts was the Dark Side of the Moon's collaboration of New Horizons. I loved that piece. And what's subsequently coming as well, Bastard van Asgard on behalf of Feuerschwangs. So she is, like I said, of recent appearance. Also, second reason, and what's oftentimes compelled by not only Mertemia, but many of the other artists on part of the collaborative model. A subset of music, which many of you know, again, has been a principal goal of mine to manifest music uh, coverage on a grander scale on this channel, because it is a beloved art form with me. I love the collaborative model on part of t giving me the opportunity for future first introductions, especially as I am self-diving my way deeper into the European rock and metal landscape. And I love, again, the fellowship experience that we can have on part of that first uh, impression model, engaging talents together for the first time. So I oftentimes utilize the collaborative presence to f discover new people. And Fabienne, she is of mind, I think in particular, because I've been running through, and I can I'll pull up, up in a minute, I have the list written down, in fact. I've been running over the next list of what I'm calling the next phase of groups that I wish to consult, many of which are on a first-name basis. Fifteen, I believe, if memory serves me correctly, I'm part of a European variety. And I will tell you, apart from many other names that some of you have been requesting for a while, Illuvity, I think it's pronunciation, and Illuvity, Luma Shade are on that list. So maybe that's why Fabienne was first of mind, because she popped in, and I'm like, okay, you know, maybe, right, we'll see. Well, again, I'm still running for my list of names, and it, it didn't expect it would be the case, but then suddenly I go on Instagram again a couple of days later, apparently I was dead on the money with who he picked. Hysterical. But I'm very happy to engage, right, with Fabienne, who I've admired. Again, early days introduction, for sure. Uh, noteworthy Swiss artist, again, like I said, from Elevati uh, and Illumishade, who transfixed me on behalf of her lightness in pitch and her accent, which is beautiful, again, on, on New Horizons. And if you've not humored that track from Dark Side of the Moon, I mean, that entire album is good, but um, I would recommend that one steadfastly. This is my second introduction. Again, third of what's planned currently, Bastard Van Asgard, in coming 
coming hopefully soon once I start getting my Foyer Schwong's coverage up. I've been spending a lot of months with them. And and then some point later, in fact, with Illumishade, uh, <laughs> Illumishade and Illuvati, apart from the other groups, again, like I said, that I'm planning on bringing on, I have, in fact, as of this morning, determined the selection. I have yet to acquire the tracks. I will, but I have determined what tracks I'll be focusing on the channel. So hopefully they'll be coming on soon. I can't wait to engage with them forever. Anyway. Mortemia. We return again to the COVID Aftermath sessions. If you've not had the pleasure of entertaining this album before, I think you're going to love it. Uh, Mortemia, again, is a very skilled music visionary in the way that I regard him, as well as how many have attributed him that same uh, um, credit in the past. And with Fabienne, it'll be fun to get a second ever prize or performance. Every artist that has collaborated with Mortemia has been a treat to entertain, and I'm sure Antidote will be no different. We have a visualizer as well, which is per usual with his work. Um, I'm going to go ahead and cue both of those up, and we can enjoy Fabian's talents and Mortemia's as well together. Um, maybe for some of you, for the first time, for me, a reprisal experience with Fabian and several appearances later with Mortemia. Again, I can't recommend him enough if you've never engaged. Let this be your first opportunity. I'm sure you'll love it. Ooh, Dominant Synth. Taking this back a couple years, the styling. Take a deep dive into your mind. I like that twinge. Her voice is so delicate. That's such a creative balancing. Real fun vibe here. Again, this piece feels pleasurably dated on era choice. Like some elements are again evoking an ancestral mood of music. I love her accent, but again, it's the delicacy of her voice here. That blends so creatively with the tone and the energy of the song as well. And we've never had like this visual storytelling narrative. It's usually around along the lines of a uh, performance. So this is different. It kind of is that, but it's a little more dramatized. associations in every element to create such a unified work here. It has such a real classic rock mood, but it is very true to Martinez's governed style on the, on the album as it four tracks in. Rich and passion performance. You can really tell Fabian's is driving that vocal power. And I appreciate that passion. I really do.
good layering. I love the faintness too on the high reflection. Good choices, especially on the summary. I love the subtlety of an outro, just crickets. <laughs> so peaceful. Exquisite poetry on narrative and on visual style. Everything here blends. I'll talk about the music in a minute, but I, I've said before, you know, when I consider my background, I come from a writing major. It's what I graduated in. Poetry is a preferred writing style of me on part of the imaginary and the emotional uh, um, focus. And I love the theme of duality. So when I see it employed in art, notably in the cinematic space, but I've seen it in music before as well, alongside Antidote for sure, and maybe in every music ventures too, definitely. I love the white on black, especially when you're depicting different types. It, 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 again, the archetypes of the girl, that, or, the, the, well, let's speak more broadly, the person that the song is embodying here in the pursuit of, again, whatever the lyrics I'm speaking to from what I could drive out of it. And you could definitely apply it broadly, I think. Antidote could be a cure to so many different things. Again, I'll speak to the song in a minute, but the image of, again, the innocent the innocent girl running away from this dark, supernatural, paranormal presence. Right? Kind of like, what, what that's, it, it, if you attribute it closely to, let's say, for example, like some horror movie, right? I got, like, Blair Witch vibes watching this, just slightly. I don't know if that's what was envisioned, but at least on style, it kind of reminded me of one of those, like, found footage horror movies. But... Um, the poetry, again, of that white versus black balance of innocence versus, you know, darkness. Beautifully illustrated on behalf of the visual. I love how it, it's... there. There's no... There's no visual obstruction and concentration beyond, again, the central image of Fabien and the environment. It's all just so shrouded until the very end, of course. But it's perfectly told. On theme, it's a wonderful mirror to what the song is speaking to. And the song drives to that. The song's beautiful to listen to. It has a bit of like a classic rock, kind of, kind of like a subtle popish flair. Not, not as much. It's more like a classic rock mood that the intro definitely evokes again an earlier period in music, especially those synths, like 70s, 80s, kind of that type of energy. I love that. Uh, that is so, it's such a good choice. And Fabienne's vocals, again, I think her accent is just beautiful, the lightness of it meshed with an enhanced percussion and a good drive. It is softer by comparison to some of the other works um, in Mortemia's history. This album feels... I, I don't want to say... Sub it's not subdued. Well, I, I, I'm not saying that as a diss or a critique. It's intentionally, I think, softer than the Pandemic Pandemonium Sessions because it is a little more hopeful on vision. At least the songs that have been expressed to us are have... I mean, they still have my. They, they might have a, 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 a tragic atmosphere that blends well into the gothic tone, but there is still some sort of revealed inspiration. There's an elevation in mood that does take place, and this song kind of drives at that as well amidst, again, like I said, dark, turbulent circumstances. It's a fun song, though, on engagement. Great life to it. But it, it, oh, man, I. I I love breaking down songs and just analyzing them. With Mortemia, it's so detailed-specific. <laughs> I love Morton. He really is a pleasure to entertain. And it's an honor to cover his work. As I'm sure for many of you, it's an honor to be introduced to him. And Fabienne. Again, the lightness, the background inflections, and the raises. She's got a lower octave range here. Which is good for the... Well, I mean, it's not like the lowest you could go. But it's kind of like middle territory, at least in uh, musical scaling. But... It, it, it has a good embodiment in the song's presence, right? But it, it, there's this extra fuel blended in the background as sort of a suppressed detail that is enhanced when you hear it in concentration, but it, it just naturally integrates. It, it's a wonderful chemistry on vision on everything here. There's just such a beautiful synergy. I'd love to hear your thoughts, Jim if this was the first introduction point on behalf of either uh, Fabienne or Mortemia. If you feel free, of course, to disclose your perspective. But again, 
you know, with Mortinia, I've been engaging for a number of months. I, I've had a really fun time engaging with his works and learning many of her artists, you know, out there in the world. Uh, notably, as I said, though, the European regard. And with Fabienne, it's nice to get a return appearance and to deepen my understanding in terms of her talents. I can't wait to engage further with her. Again, I, I thought my introduction point was fabulous, and this is a great accompaniment. With a beautiful tale on vision, broad appeal in the narrative, mixed with such a fabulous vision of bringing that piece to life in vocal performance, on voc or, uh, that video uh, formatting and presentation, and a fun performance, a strong performance, impassioned, good art, as always. The COVID Aftermath Sessions, in my opinion, is evolving beautifully, and with Fabienne, it's wonderful to hear her grace the album, and a track that, in my opinion, does benefit her a lot. It's a great fit for her styling. Thank you so much for watching this video. Before you bounce, feel free to drop a like and comment, subscribe to this channel with a ding on the bell, and share this video with your friends. And consider checking out the description here. There you'll find links to my other channels, as well as addresses to my other social media accounts and ways you can help support my work if you feel so inclined. May God bless you, and looking forward to when our paths cross again.